Every, every, every man that Elizabeth Taylor ever made, ever married, he, that boy became something. Come on now. Yes, he did. Yes, well, Richard did. Burton, come on. Yes, John, he did. John Warner. Everybody she ever married, she, that joke of his career took off when he hooked up with that sister. All right. We're looking at verse 21 here. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. This word rib is more than just a real bone. It means like a cell or a part of or a side, okay? So when God made Eve, he took part of Adam. And the beauty of how God made Adam and Eve is that out of Adam came Eve, and out of Eve comes all of creation and all of humanity. So you see there's an interconnectedness between Adam and Eve. So when God made Eve, she was made as a part of Adam. Okay? She was taken out of Adam. And, and, and I've shared with you before about how when God made Eve, he took his time. Mm -hmm. When God made Adam, he threw some stuff together. But when he took made Eve, he told Adam, you take a nap because I'm going to take my time. All right. And as, as God began to make Eve, he said, I'm going to do this one up. And he packed some stuff into Eve that Adam never saw before. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But Adam, but the Bible says in verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Look at verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And my attention was drawn to the word cleave. What do you mean cleave? So I took a look at some definitions of the word cleave. There are two ways you can look at the word cleave. In one definition, you cleave from. Come on now. Like a meat cleaver. Come on right. now. It is a, one type of cleave separate. you separate from. But in another type of cleave, you cling to. That's right. Now, when it talks about separating from, cleave. To separate or cut with a tool, such as a sharp instrument, such as cleave the bone. To make by cutting into, meaning the water is going to cleave a channel in the rock. Cleave, meaning come apart, meaning separate into distinct parts, either to divide or to part or to split, especially along a natural line of division. In other words, he was saying to the husband, when you leave your mother and father, you need to separate yourself. Come on in. You need to separate yourself from your mom and dad because you have a new person to be connected to. Amen? Amen. And some folks will probably tell you, don't be carrying your business. Come on now. Don't be carrying your, your, you and your wife business. Don't be carrying your business back to home telling mom and dad everything you want to do. Because by the time you finish telling all the ugly stuff, they done got mad at your sister. Come on now. You come home, y'all make up, and then you go back to visit mom and dad, you wonder why they mad at your wife. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you told them all the bad stuff. Amen. So what we're saying then is you separate, all right? You cleave, you separate it, meaning taken apart from. You need to separate from your, from your mom and dad. And then he says cleave unto the wife. This idea of cling now, meaning to come or be in close contact with to stick or hold together and resist separation. Amen. The word of God says to Adam, you shall cleave unto your wife. In other words, y'all try not to be separated. Amen. You want some, uh, some ways in which the word is used. The dress clings to her body, cleave. The label stuck to a box, cleave, come on now. The sushi rice grains cohere, cleave. So now a husband shall now cleave unto his wife and they too shall become one flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let me share something with you about, about men. Alright? Over in Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, listen to what it says here. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now drop down to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The genius of God is in knowing that a man needs to work. All right. 
Amen. His Amen. self esteem is based upon his ability to be praised for what he does. Mm -hmm. A man needs to work, and as soon as God made Adam, he gave him a job. Right. Amen. 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 Now, young men, I want you to just pause for a moment. I'm going to talk to the young ladies for a moment, okay? All right. You guys, just, just don't go to sleep on me. Just pause for a moment. We got you. Young ladies, I want to talk to you for a moment. <coughs> When a young man comes to you, he's going to tell you two things in an effort to get your attention. He's going to say things like, your legs are tall and lean like the cedars of Lebanon. Your hair is dark as the feathers of a raven. Your skin is smooth as silk. Your, your eyes are as clear and inviting as a moonlit summer's evening. Your breath is as fresh as the morning dew. Your lips are formed oars and sweet like melons. Your teeth are white like ivory. Your fingers are lean like arrows. And your fingernails are multicolored like the rainbow. Your voice is smooth like the flowing of the Nile. Your scent and your fragrance is a Let it go. Let it talk. Let it talk. And when he finally gets through talking, you ask him one question. Well, have you got a job? <laughs> no. Come on. Man. After all that talk, have you got a job? Come on. All that talk. You see, because the woman of the 21st century is looking for a BMW. Come on. Y'all know what a BMW is. Black man working. Amen. All that talk, trying to get your attention. Amen. You make sure he's working. He can do all he can do all the talking he want to talk, but if he can't back it up with a paycheck, you better tell him to keep on stepping. You keep going the same direction he was going, all right? Amen. Amen. All right, that's that. We'll leave that one alone. Now, let's talk about some differences between males and females. They differ in skeletal structure. The women having a shorter head, broader face, chin less protruding, shorter legs and longer trunk. The first finger of a, the first finger of a woman's hand is usually longer than the third, and with men the reverse is true. Amen. Boys' teeth generally last longer than do those of girls. Women have a larger stomach, kidneys, liver, and appendix, and smaller lungs. In function. Women have several very important functions totally lacking in a man, such as menstruation, pregnancy, and lactation, and all of these influence behavior and feelings. She has more different hormones than does a man. The same gland behaves differently in the two sexes. Thus, the woman's thyroid is larger and more active, and it enlarges during pregnancy, but also during menstruation. It makes her more prone to goiter, provides resistance to cold and is associated with smooth skin and relatively hairless body and a thin layer of subcutaneous fat, which are important elements in the concept of personal beauty. It also contributes to emotional instability. She laughs and cries more easily. A woman's blood contains more water, and which would be 20% fewer red blood cells. And since these supply oxygen to the body cells, she tires more easily and is more prone to faint. Her constitutional viability is therefore strictly a long-range matter. When the working days in a British factory under wartime conditions was increased from 10 to 12 hours, accidents among women increased 150%, but among men not at all. So you see, what's happening here is among men, our energy and our strength is immediate, okay? We can fist fight, we can plow, and we can work the field. We got quick energy. But with a woman, her energy is long range. A, a, a woman will suffer with putting up with hard times for a long time. Come on now. Oh, but child, when she get tired of putting up with it, me somebody. Amen, y'all. So what we're saying is that women are strong in one way, 
while men are strong in a different way. Amen. 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 You each have your strengths and you each have your weaknesses, but when you put the two halves together, it's like two sides of a coin. You got a head side and a tail side, and when you put the two sides together, you have a whole coin. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you see, the, the, the woman, she embodies characteristics of God different from a man. And when you put those two characteristics together, you have a whole picture of what God is like. Amen? Amen. All right, now let me pause for another moment here and so I can do a, another little activity, all right? Okay. Now, men, I want you to pay attention, all right? Well. I want you to pay attention to what's going to happen, all right? Okay. Ladies, I am going to count to three. And on the count of three, I want all of you to shout out as loud as you can the three words you wish men would say more often. Now, fellas, I'm not going to tell them what to say. You watch what happens. One, two, three. <laughs> now, fellas, I did not tell them what to say. We did not rehearse this. They all agree, okay? They all agree and they all knew the answer without me telling them what to say. Now, I've got a blessing for you, men, okay? I have a blessing for you in the form of a challenge. <coughs> Between now and Resurrection Sunday, I want to challenge every man in this building. And if you are willing to accept this challenge, I want you to stand up. I challenge you to say to your wife, I love you, every day between now and Resurrection Sunday, and see if you want to get your wife. I love you. 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 All right, stand up one more time, fellas. Stand up one more time if you want to accept this challenge. Fellas, if you will say to your wife, I love you, every day, she will put the grapes in your mouth. <laughs> no, she won't. Okay. No, well, she won't. No, she All right. <laughs> no, she won't. I'm trying to tell you with that. No, I'm telling you some good I, money here. Okay? I, I do it, and I don't get no grapes in my mouth. <laughs> so, ladies, you hold it to it. Either say I love you or show I love you. You can leave a voicemail. You can send her little text messages. Honey, I was thinking about you today. Well, hey, you. Yeah. Come on, man. So, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> All right. Now we got. Hey, man. Let's not be positive about this. Hey, man. Okay. Doorkeepers. Doorkeepers. That's the handout. Make sure you run new one. I think I'm trying to get that from Sunday. I only made 60 of these, so we'll see how far we get. Reverend Jackie, would you give me some help with this? Yes. I want to go over some things with you called speaking different languages to show you how men and women, they think differently about different things and they see things differently. When, you, when I say they see things differently and they think about things differently, when, uh, when you hear the statement, I don't have a thing to wear, okay? When you hear the statement, I don't have a thing to wear, the wife is thinking, I don't have anything new to wear. But when the husband hears, I don't have a thing to wear, when he says and he's thinking, I don't have anything clean to wear, okay? That's the difference between the two, amen? Now, like I said, this message is leading up on Valentine's Day. We deal with members of the opposite sex all the time. I mean, my mother was a girl, okay? So I have to learn how to communicate and understand what's different about between men and women. And all around, we've got brothers and sisters and so forth. Reverend Jackie, will you come up and help me?